Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. It is February in the garden. So while a lot of things are just starting to come up, we have tulips coming up, mascari coming up, ranunculus going crazy. We don't have too many blooms yet. Our pansies are just starting to pick up after winter. Um, our cabbages are still looking beautiful. But we've done a lot in the last month. At the end of the January garden tour, I was like, there's not gonna be anything fancy to show y'all in February. It's gonna be almost exactly the same. And that just goes to show you that even on slow months, a lot happens every single month in the garden. And I love doing these garden tours because you really get to see that progress. So I'm still cleaning things out. I've been planting all of my pre-chilled bulbs for spring. We've got all the tulips in now, daffodils, alliums, muscari. I'm so excited. I've also got quite the army of little milk jug greenhouses planted. Spring, spring, spring. All the little babies that are going to grow up and be planted in the garden and in the cut flower garden beds over behind me. So let's go ahead and get started. I have only a little bit of time today because I'm actually going to get my nails done, they're awful, uh, with my mom this afternoon. So let's try to make it all the way through the garden before I have to leave. All right, so as always, we are gonna start up in front of the shed. You can see that we've been doing a lot of work here on my milk jugs. I am putting things in these pots finally. I know when we put in the drip to this area, I left a drip tube right here. I told y'all I was doing a pot, but I finally bought one. And in addition to my little Alberta spruce that I've been looking for the perfect summer location, he goes over in the foxglove patch in the fall and winter. He needs full sun in the summer, so I'm moving him up here. And in the big pot, still in my car, I'm going to be planting a beautiful Emily Bronte David Austin Rose that I just got from my local nursery. I'm really, really, really excited about it. So we'll have to do a whole video on that because I bought one and my mom bought two uh, pink climbing roses from David Austin as well. So I'm really excited about those. I think it will be the perfect showstopper at the front of the garden when you pull up. You can see I've just set the spruce in this pot because I bought two, a bigger one, and this is a smaller one to see the size. I think it's gonna work perfect. I also bought a giant roll. <laughs> My mom asked if it was a rug when it showed up. It is not, it is landscaping fabric. So I'm finally going to be putting landscaping fabric all around the raised beds, all here in front of the shed and all the way back to the edge of the fence so that I can stop weeding the giant weed fields that come up here. We're going to continue the pea gravel path up to the beds and then I think we're going to mulch all of this in the beds and then back to the fence. So got my wheelbarrow out. We've been cleaning things out, cutting things back. You can see the tulips that are starting to come up. I marked with red tags. Last year I left half the tulips in, I took half out. Oftentimes in our zone, you need to pre-chill your bulbs, but sometimes tulips will come back and bloom. So I wasn't sure last year was the first time I did a big tulip show. So I left half in, I took half out, all the tulips that I left in are coming back. So I've marked them with red flags. I want to see if they bloom because if they don't bloom, then they definitely need to be dug up and pre-chilled to bloom in our zone. I also added in about 250 additional pre-chilled tulips. So cross your fingers for a glorious spring show. Started cutting back the mums and the lambs here. That's why my wheelbarrow's out. I've got to keep going that way with the lambs ear need to cut back my iris. It was evergreen all winter until this last week. We must have had just one freeze too many and now it all needs cut back, but that's okay. You can see all the ranunculus coming up around the mums that I cut back. So we will have beautiful pink ranunculus. More tulips. My Laura Pedlum is putting out buds so these bloom beautiful pink blooms in the spring all over them so very excited they always look beautiful still need to cut back the dusty miller but you know we've got 
watermelon started, dwarf zinnias, alyssum. We've got uh, pincushion flowers. These are a salmon, so they should be really pretty. Hyacinth ruby bean. We've got uh, eucalyptus started, white gumfrina, pink gumfrina. I don't remember what this one is. Ah, more peach fox gloves. Sure. Got to fill this all up, but you can see I started cleaning out the raised beds. When I got to this bed, I realized I still had quite a few yams that are in here. Now this one I pulled out and it's probably dead, but I just left it on top to remind me. I planted uh, sweet potatoes and regular potatoes last year. So need to go through the entire bed, see what's in there, and then top them off. But before I plant for next spring, where I planted zinnias and cosmos and this bed and the opposite outside bed over there, have lots of little zinnia and cosmos seedlings that have self-seeded themselves and since I'm growing all my cut flowers from seeds, I'm honestly, like, I'll probably thin them out eventually. But for now, this year, anything that self-seeded itself in this bed can grow. We will just let it go and uh, clean it up a bit later. And I will, I will direct seed in the empty spaces. I just want a riot of color here that I can cut. So lots and lots of self-seeded babies in here and they can all stay free plants you can see where we were doing all our milk jugs and my dog's water bowl that i left out and my uh gloves they were filthy we've had a rain since then they're now clean so yay but these are the jugs we started in december poppies doing really well and foxgloves doing really well so I'm hoping we will be able to plant these out maybe mid-March as the very beginning level of our foxglove plants my uh gardenia is doing really well this time last year it was very yellow very like chlorosis maybe but um i've given it a lot of love and it is all glossy green this year so i'm hoping for lots of blooms and lots of growth because this will be its third summer in the garden this whole summer this whole summer this whole area needs an overhaul this year but once we get the uh, landscape and the mulch fabric in that is the beginning I want to keep planting things all around the air conditioner and the side of my house here so you don't see this ugly portion. But we've got a, a layer started here in front of the shed, including knockout roses that are starting to bud out for the season. This is the little baby one that we moved and he's doing really well. I think the butterfly bush, this is the second time I've planted them here. The second time they look absolutely dead. We will see. Sometimes butterfly bushes take a long time to leaf out, but if they don't come back this year, I'll put something else there, something that can handle the area better. This hydrangea is already leafing out for this season. This is my big white one. And then this monstrosity is my knockout rose that loves its spot so much in my garden, it cannot stand it. And you can see where I stopped deadheading last week. I got to still do this half. I also got a wired uh, baker's rack bookshelf that I'm going to put around the back of the shed to organize all my loose pots on because I hate how this looks. But over here in the corner, we got the Peggy Martin, Miss Peggy Martin, all tied up to the fence. She was looking crazy. And she has so many buds, y'all. Like, let me see if I can find some. Because when I was doing this, my mom helped me. There was buds everywhere. I know there was some down here. I mean, just leaf, 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 leaf. But there was literal buds. And now I'm not, not going to find anyone I'm trying to show y'all. 
But either way, this is this rose's second year down here. And you can just see like how much she's grown. I just want her to cover this whole fence and be just a beautiful, you know, bank of roses that will cover the ugly and not take up a lot of vertical space or horizontal space because I don't want to plant a whole border here. My plan is to put the landscape fabric right up to the fence, mulch right up to it. Dogs have the run of the backyard. And then eventually where all of this junk is, I want to put a potting bench. So this will still be a working area, but a nicer looking working area. Whew. Then my my milkweed that did really well last year all needs to be cut back and weeded. I cannot wait to get the landscape fabric down here because all of this is specific plantings, not necessarily garden bed. I just want to do big impact plants down here to hide things like the bottom siding of my house and my air conditioner. So we will be cutting holes for the things like my snow on the mountain bushes that need to be cut back. These get like six feet tall and like three feet wide. So eventually they will just cover this whole area and you won't see as much of it. That's the whole plan. Cleaned out my butterfly garden. I do need to take the leaves out of here, but you can see that my parsley from last year is still doing great. I cut back all the dead and it's already putting out new growth for the new season. So hopefully this will survive. My lantana has green at the bottom some places. So, you know, any plant that wants to come back can. We're going to grow the hyacinth bean on these uh, trellises this year. And I think that will just be beautiful right there. So we'll have to probably replant the dill. So especially this butterfly garden is for swallowtails. They specifically like dill and parsley. We saw so many butterflies last year, so many. They need a host plant and a food plant, especially if they're going to lay eggs. And they ate the dill all the way back, which is perfect. That's what you want. It means that the butterflies are laying eggs and the caterpillars that hatch before they make more butterflies go into their cocoons are eating the host and the food plants. So there you go. It's working. We'll do more this year. We went ahead and attached this rose up to the house a little bit better. It has the prettiest pink blooms, but he just, he's like a long stemmed rose. He likes to only bloom at the edge, the very ends of things. So we'll see. My bee balm has self seeded. You can see my two plants. I had one here, one there, and all under here. Look at this. All bee balm babies everywhere. So. We're going to let those grow and then we may move some to a different area, but if it's going to be an invasive self seeder, I like it here. This is where I have, you can see Gara coming up. I have cone flowers. All the back of this bed is cone flowers that self seed. And so I really like this whole section. I just like to come up and be tall and wild and blooming and with the comb flowers and the gara and the bee balm, it really does that. Looks like nothing in the fall and winter, but in the spring and summer, it's glorious. So something like bee balm that's going to self-seed a lot can really go wild in this bed. I'm not going to fight it. can take over anywhere the comb flowers aren't. I don't know that I want to put it in a different spot because I don't want it to take over one of my garden beds that I don't want to run wild. Maybe somewhere down here where I'm hiding stuff, I could put it and let it run wild. But you can see green at the base of some of these bigger coneflower plants. So little coneflower leaves coming up. I cleaned out a lot of my lamb's ear was looking really funky. I'll show you some of the ones I haven't cleaned out yet. But even after I cleaned this out last week, you can see how much the plants like being cleaned out and how much new green growth it's putting out at the bottom so that these plants will fill out and go crazy again this year. Then we have my favorite new addition to the garden. These are my new proven winter sedums and they are a rockin' sedum 
from their rockin' line, which means they only get eight to 10 inches tall. These were obviously in the nursery because they are still blooming. I cut them back quite a bit to clean them up and I love them. I want them to really fill out. If they're happy in their place, they can get up to 24 inches wide. So ideally, I just want them to take over this whole area in front of my oak leaf hydrangea that has all these beautiful buds. And this is its third year. I planted this guy. He was a transplant from my mom's garden. I literally planted two sticks, two sticks that we dug up from her garden. I will link that video down below. And now he is... 10, 12 sticks, like he's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. He can have the whole garden bed if he wants it. He's beautiful. So I'm trying not to put much in here that will compete with him. Things like the sedum and the lambs here that will ground cover and go underneath. And especially since he blooms in the spring, things like the sedum bloom in the late summer and fall that will give me interest the other times of the year. The other side where we have the ranunculus, those won't compete. And then I've just been doing a lot of annuals here so that as this grows, I can stop doing the annuals. The only uh, conflicting plant is that butterfly bush, which see how this butterfly bush is already leafing out compared to the ones down by the shed. That's why I think they're dead. And this cat's pajamas, uh, Nepeta, it's the little one. So, you know, he can spread out and be a ground cover on that side. We may have to move the butterfly bush eventually, but that's okay. And more tulips coming up, more tulips. More tulips over here. Look at this. Grow, baby, grow, grow. Oh, I love it. You can also see my yarrows doing well. These are all second year foxgloves coming back. We planted these from seed last year. And so hopefully we will have beautiful, beautiful blooms on these this year and they will get giant. We've got some poppies, which, ooh, this one's starting to pop out of his shell today. I don't want to mess with them, but look at that color coming through. These are the Champagne Elegance poppies. So they're a, ooh, sorry, I just tried to fall. They're an orange, yellow, peach, salmon, white champagne, like mix, all in the same plant. And I have three of them. They've been blooming all winter since I planted them last fall. And then I think we're going to do more sweet alyssum all along here. You can see my two sweet alyssum plants. I'm going to just do a whole carpet of it this year. And then amongst the foxgloves, I want to do like salvia back here this year or something something that gets a little taller in the middle we'll see either way another cleaned out lamb's ear doing good pansies we did a bunch of little mascari all through here that i just planted so it's not popping up yet but what is popping up are the ranunculus i planted last fall you can see the difference so these tall ones here these are corms I planted last year that are coming back for their second season. The smaller ones, see the smaller one, are new corms I just planted this season. So, you know, they, they will really grow and love your ground if you are in a, a similar zone like I am where it doesn't get too cold in the winter. And they, they naturalize and multiply for us here. So I just wanna keep packing this area out until they take over and then we'll have to divide some but I think I planted like six here last year so I planted a whole bunch more this year I want it to be really full and then in a couple years we'll probably have to to thin it out but we also have a whole row of agapanthus here so we'll have pansies and muscari agapanthus ranunculus and then I have a whole swath of tulips back here with the foxgloves behind it. If all of that comes together, this will be a beautiful spring show. On the other hand, down here, we have daffodils, uh, alliums, muscari. This is muscari that we planted last year. So you can see it's already coming up and hopefully will bloom for us first. 
cabbages could be worse. <laughs> we have some ranunculus in here. So one, two, three, four spots of ranunculus. And then this is where I was talking about where I do a whole swath of foxgloves. But for some reason, they're more like annuals here. They don't like to come back in this spot like they do behind me. So, okay, I just put that little spruce here in the fall and winter and let him be the centerpiece. Close enough. This hydrangea is not leafing out, but you can see all the buds. That mean it will eventually be beautiful. Does not want to focus. Here we go. I cannot wait. I love this hydrangea. It is one of my favorites. It is a big mop head pink and blue hydrangea and she is glorious there. And I think this is her fourth summer. So keep growing, baby, keep growing. That one and the one over by my front door are my, the first, like first two plants I planted in this garden besides the crepe myrtles. So they are, they're doing well. I need to fix my path at some point this spring because it is really coming up after all the rain we've had. This area, you can see I've got one, two, three lantanas that got huge last season. I'm going to transplant this one somewhere else because three was too many for this space. But even with how big they got, you can see the muscari. And the muscari has really naturalized here. We've got the lambs here. I did not clean out. So here's a good example. Lambs here I cleaned out. Lambs here I have not cleaned out. Look at all that dead down in there. So we need to do that. But, you know, it takes a while to get in there and get it all down because I just have it everywhere all down the garden. And speaking of need to get in there and get it out, uh, these pumpkins are nasty. And I think that's going to have to be a brother job now. <laughs> but I did cut back the moms and I planted a ring of daffodils in each of these urns. So hopefully those will come up and bloom for us. <sighs> if you caught that video, you know that these are peach daffodils. The yellow ones we've pre-chilled and planted at mom's house plenty of times and they've come up and been beautiful. These peach ones I have tried three years in a row. They have come up, but they have never bloomed. So I dug them all up last season and pre-chilled them. If that doesn't do it, if they do not bloom with the pre-chilling, then they're out. We'll find out. So I put them in a couple places just to experiment and we'll see how they do. We will get less spring interest the further away from the front door we get, but here's my other, this is the twist and shout hydrangea. You can see she also has beautiful buds all the way up. So hopefully, she will bloom really well for us. I need to clean out this lamb's ear, but pansies are doing well. Mascari's coming back. Some tulips from last year. And then I planted a whole, like 50 tulips around. Starts here, comes all the way to here, and then it goes back around the tree. So hopefully that will be beautiful. My pincushion flowers, my April night salvia, and all of this is verbena, pink verbena from Proven Winners. Looks great. Hopefully it will all flower beautifully for me this year, but it's all green. That's the main goal. So, ranunculus, more of that cat, cat's pajamas, the little walker low. Um, my knockout rose here that likes to grow just one stem up to the sun. I didn't have the heart to cut it back when I pruned them because all the buds. So there you go. A little fairy. We've got uh, tulips all throughout here. Oh, here we go. This one is starting to bloom. This is so pretty. She just gets covered, covered with these bright pink blooms here. I love it so much. Another butterfly bush that's leafing out already. You can see foxgloves from last year that are coming back. 
knockout rows that is shorter. More tulips that are coming up from last year, but I did a whole new ring here. Did some great big purple alliums. Then a ring of ranunculus up front. Another knockout rose. The poor iris needs to be cut back. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Another butterfly bush that's uh, leafing out. This is my wine salvia. And she looks dead. I'm really hoping she's not. She was glorious last year. But my mom's is already green and starting to put out buds. So I don't know. Hummingbird and behind my knockout rose. And then all the cyclamen. Ooh. So weed growing in my foxtail fern. Need to cut him back a little bit, but still got green. Cyclamen is still blooming. Another hydrangea with lots of buds. And then we've got just a lot of iris in here and lamb's ear that needs cleaned out. And a hibiscus right here, my hibiscus stick. He hates it here. He doesn't get nearly enough sun. So I'm going to transplant him down to the border behind my white bench where he will get lots of sun and can get huge. Hibiscus can get giant. Um, and I have three rows of Sharon's there that do really well. So he should be much happier down there in the sun. He, he's not happy here at all. I thought he would get more sun here than he did when I first planted him and it's just shade. He grows like three leaves and maybe one bloom for me every season. So we're going to move him. But there you go. There is the garden for February. I hope you liked this little tour. We've done a lot. A lot of bulb planting in the last month, which of course we can't see yet. But a lot of cleaning out, a lot of changing, a lot of milk jug planting, a lot of prep for next season, which January, February. But our first, last... Our last frost date is mid-March, so um, we're getting pretty close to spring here in the south. 8B, zone 8B, y'all, so I cannot wait. I will show y'all the garden next March, and hopefully we will just have way more shoots, way more things up, way more, more daffodils and alliums and uh, tulips just starting to grow, so I cannot wait. I will see you then. Bye, y'all.